I know you guys are big time and there's a lot of people gonna watch this video. So if, for the people that watch this video, if you leave with one thing out of this video, even though there's much more important things being said about life and happiness and making money about just playing the game perfectly in my opinion, this is what I want you to leave with. When you go into a wine shop, not only if you remember what you like or don't or know what you like or don't, no matter what it is, or you have no idea, just like the question was asked, you have to try a wine from a varietal you've never had before. Please don't buy another Pinot Grigio, another Zin, another Pinot Noir, a different kind of Chardonnay. No. Tanat, Chinon, you know, Rueda, Albarino. You know, these are the things I want you to look for. You've got to try a wine from Cajor, you know, from Bandol, from, you know, Atarantes from Argentina. So the answer is this. I can tell you right now, you are a wine expert if you spend two years and in that window you never order the same kind of wine. And if you do that, and then you, once you hit all the wines you can kind of find, Gruner Veltliner, Rieslings from Germany, Rieslings from Washington State, you know, different places making different grapes, you're gonna be shocked of what you know and how much you understand your palate because everybody who's watching this right now, here's what you're really doing. You're only drinking Coke and Sprite every meal. And you have no idea if root beer, Hawaiian punch, grape soda, black cherry, you have no clue. Tomato juice, pomegranate juice, you have no idea if you like those because you're sticking to Pinot Grigio and Pinot Noir. Please, for me, try something new. There's two countries right now that I think you can be very safe in finding some really neat stuff. One is South Africa. If you order a Chenin Blanc or find a Chenin Blanc, very crisp, very clean, very aromatic, great with shellfish and light salads. You can get them for eight to 12 bucks all day long. And in red, hands down, the dominant country in value in my opinion is Portugal. You know, Portugal is just ripping. I think the quality out of Portugal for seven to $12 is staggering. I actually want to do a 2020 investigation on how much these people are getting paid over there because I can't figure out the math of how the wines can be so good and they can deliver them for seven bucks. So from the Douro, the Dow, Alentejo, these are places that really make some great, great Portuguese wines. What your palate likes. So the makers for sure, the pedigree's important, right? Um, you know this builder's good, you know this chef's good, you know this car maker's good. You've got to reference point to knowing if the wine's gonna be good. But this is farming. I don't care if you're the best winemaker of all time, if it rains every day, you're finished. So that's also very, very important. What I think is most important when you first start learning is understanding the grape varietals. Understanding the difference between Chenin Blanc and Sauvignon Blanc and Riesling and Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris. And there's a lot there that will really be the foundation of what you like. The real move, like the date move is to like Google, ask, you know, like esoteric grape varietals, right? And just like ask for like, you know, do you have any late harvest Grenache from the Banyul? You know, totally like throw off the Psalm with the mad skills, but you've got like only one move. Um, if you want to be a little bit more authentic, which I highly recommend, I think it's imperative to name off three wines that you've had in the past that you've liked and ask the sommelier to go in a different direction with varietal or from a different country, you know, and to expand your palate. I think, you know, there's a romance with, you know, being on a date of saying, you know, to your date, you know, let's explore some new stuff together kind of thing. I like cabs, but what else would I like? Well, you might like tanat because there's big tannins and big fruit, you know, and so that would always be something that would be my go-to move. You know, I think it, we're living in the Google era, right? I mean, I feel like you can learn so much more by reading good blogs like Venography or Fermentation, um, Dr. Vino. There's, there's just too many good resources uh, from the blogosphere uh, and from forums. And, you know, what I love about Corked is not only can you review the wines, but then people can comment on those reviews. So, like, creating threaded conversations around wines, I think, is, is very cool. And so... Uh, I'm excited about the fact that I don't think people have to spend $150 for a class or you know, necessarily buy a book. Now, 
both are so worthwhile. Classes, there's that engagement, interaction, books, it's kind of there with you. You can, you know, I, you know, I still think there's nice romance about a book. Um, though I'm thrilled for Kindle or e-reader or whatever, you know, however you want it, iPhone, knock yourself out. Um, it's all about the content. But I, I think there's so much free content out there that I don't necessarily need to sit here and recommend a source that's gonna hit somebody in the wallet. Save those 20 bones to buy a good bottle of wine. Yeah, we were talking outside and, and you know, I was saying you'd be shocked what happens between 15 and 25. The wine world right now, 25 to 40 bones, you can drink world-class stuff. You know, you start getting into the Chateauneuf de Pop world, Priorat world, you know, you start getting into wines that you can't necessarily get to under 15 and they're, they're really sensational. Really, I feel like the quality of a wine, given the depressed market and given the advances in farming, a $30 wine today probably tasted as good as most $60 to $80 wines a decade ago. That's powerful. I mean, you know, it's powerful. You know, it's a very good direction for the wine drinker. I think it's very obvious. And so, uh, if I could say anything, if you're into wine, you know, you start looking seriously at 25 to 40 bones, you can get some crazy stuff. No. You're going to overpay. That's all. <laughs> I got nothing there. I mean, Wine of the Month clubs are fine. Listen, I created one for Gary Vaynerchuk and Wine Library TV because I wanted to create one that was legit. I mean, people are getting ripped off. They're paying full value for fancy packaging and a letter that says thank you. You know, so, you know, no. I, I think that the best way to do that is to find sources that you respect and trust, whether that's Wine Library TV or another blogger um, or a local wine merchant, you know, that that's the only way he's gonna keep you is by giving you great service and saying, don't buy that, try this. Um, but I really do think we're gonna see an explosion in things like Corked. I mean, that's why I'm so bullish on it and launching it now. I think Yelp has provided a platform that people understand that community-driven scoring has value and I think that's gonna come to wine in a big way. Mm -hmm.